Hey gang, welcome back. Okay, so in this video, we're going to do two NMR problems where basically we're going to receive the chemical formula, the molecular formula, as well as an NMR spectra, right, for hydrogens, for protons. And basically, we are supposed to deduce the structure. We are supposed to take this molecular formula, the information gained from this spectrum, we're going to go through a process, and that's what this video is all about, is reinforce, reinforcing how do we go about you know, dissecting the spectrum and gaining information, organizing that information, and then from that organized info, deducing at a bond line structure. That's pretty much what you'll, that is like the ultimate test of NMR understanding. If you can do that, then you are good to go and are an NMR wizard, guru, whatever you want to call yourself. Okay. So I like to basically break this down into two steps. The very first thing you want to do is based on your molecular formula, and this is going to be a simple example, and then we'll move the second and last example in this video will be a little bit more involved. Uh, given C3H8, we need to deduce a structure. Now, if you're looking at this and you're thinking to yourself, Joe, this is super simple. Again, this is just to introduce the uh, process, and then again, in the next example, we'll crank it up. But my first, the first thing I like to do is determine the amount, uh, the, the total amount of degrees of unsaturation in our structure because once you uh, determine that and then we build our chart, we'll be good to go to deduce the structure. Okay, so for number one, you can um, do one of two ways. You can use the formula I showed you, or uh, in this case, it's not super complicated, right? Because this is an alkane. This follows the C. Uh, CN H 2N plus or sorry 2N plus 2 but I'll go ahead and do the formula for clarity purposes I'm going to do it down here so if we wanted to do degrees of unsaturation we have to do 2 times the number of carbons which we have 3 carbons then we would add the 2 that's built into the equation we add the number of nitrogens which is 0 we subtract off the number of halogens which is, halogens, which is 0 and then we subtract off the total number of hydrogens, which is 8. Divide that all by 2. But I think what you'll see is this is 6 plus 2 is 8 minus 8. So 0 divided by 2, which we are good at math, is just a flat out 0. Okay, so no degrees of unsaturation. Okay, so that's good to go. We don't have to really worry about that in this example. And that's what I kind of wanted. I wanted a simple example. Okay, so building the chart. This is the most important part, I think, for this video. So if we look at our spectrum, right, you can see that if we look at it, right, we can see two distinct peaks, and if we're going to use some terminology, they're pretty upfield, right, because they're closer to the, uh, the, the, our zero mark with our tetramethyl silane, so they're pretty shielded, right, they're upfield, they're shielded, those are, the, those are the same word, same terminology, and so they're, you know, around the chemical shifts of one, one and a half, right, nothing above two, or I guess beyond two. And these are integration numbers, right? So what this is saying is this peak corresponds to six hydrogens, and this peak corresponds to two hydrogens. That's what our integration number means. Okay, so building our chart. Now let's organize all the information we can get from this chart. And sorry, I put, there it is, okay. So what I like to do is I like to label my peaks. I'm gonna call this peak A, I'm gonna call this peak B, totally. Up to you, I just like to designate kind of like an, up, an ordering, a naming of them. So what I like to do is I like to kind of make a little chart right here. Okay? So the very first thing I like to do is kind of, um, I like to do, I like to list out what kind of coupling do they have. So if you look at peak A, and sorry, I drew this small, but one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So seven peaks on that one signal, this is a sept tet, right? It has seven peaks, you know, singlet, doublet, triplet, quartet, uh, quintet, sextet, septet, right? So this is, uh, has seven splits, so, so, uh, it's a coupling of seven, okay? Then the next thing I like to do, I'm going to actually split this off. You can do this, and I'll actually write this in red to make it more apparent, so I'm getting my colors all messed up, coupling, okay, then what I like to do is list out um, integration, now I'm just going to, I'm going to do INT for integration, so how many hydrogens does this peak correspond to, and from the chart we see two, 
Then what I like to do, I then list out um, how many neighbors should this hydrogen have, right? Which is kind of uh, an extension of this. So this is almost like the n plus 1, right? n plus 1, but just neighbors, right? So it's almost just kind of like n. So we know this is a septet. So on either side of this position, how many neighboring hydrogens do we expect? And that would be 6. And if you think about that, it's because for n plus 1, n is the number of neighbors. You add the built-in 1 for the position itself. So on either side of this position, right, we should have 6 because n plus 1 would give us 7. That's why we get the septet. And then from there, what you can do, this is a little bit optional, but you can kind of draw what it's supposed to look like. So you can almost draw like this position to the two hydrogens it's co going to correspond to. I like to put little like parentheses around it. And then from here to here, right between these two positions, we should have six hydrogens total. Okay? So let's go through position B a little faster. Uh, the car coupling is a triplet, right? Because you can see one, two, three. Our integration number is six. So this is definitely more than one position, right? Because we can't have six hydrogens at one position on one carbon. Um, for n, right? If we're a triplet, we should have two neighbors, right? Because if a triplet would be n plus 1, it would be two neighbors plus itself. That's why. And if you think about it, right? If you have, put there, this is six hydrogens right here. And what this is a common pattern. Whenever you have a triplet at 1, it's usually because you have a terminal methyl group. And that should make sense because there's three. Uh, you're going to have a carbon here we're probably with two hydrogens, right? That would be the two neighbors. And since the integration is six, you're probably just going to have two terminal uh, methyl groups. CH3s on the end. Okay, so from this information, right, we should be able to draw our structure. And again, this is simple, right? You can think our structure is going to look like this. And the good part about NMR is you can draw and check. You can just take what you drew and try to, you know, think about what this spectra would produce, and it should be what you are given. Think about this, right? We have two terminal methyl groups, so there's no electronegative atom to make anything go downfield, so this would match up perfectly. So here's a CH3, right? That's what we said it was going to look like. It should have two neighbors, right? So this should be a triplet, and sure enough, n plus 1, two neighbors plus 1, that's 3, that would give us a triplet. And then same thing at this position, right, because it's symmetrical, they're equivalent. So that's why they're on the same peak, all six hydrogens. And if we look in the middle right here, if we do n plus 1, we have six neighbors plus 1, that would give us 7, that's the septet right there. So I think as long as you get the, degree of, the degrees of unsaturation and you build this chart, when things get more complex, this was super simple you'll see that it really helps and it greatly simplifies your NMR woes. Okay, so let me erase this. We're going to do one more example. It's going to be a little bit more involved, but we can handle it. Okay, gang, so let's get our feet wet with like our first real NMR problem. All right, so spectrum looks a little bit different than the last time, right? We've definitely kicked it up a notch as opposed to just a plain old regular alkane solution. But remember, our, our objective is to deduce the structure from the molecular formula, as well as the proton NMR spectrum. Okay, so our first duty, let's make sure we follow our process, is degrees of unsaturation, if we have any. So what I'm going to do is, uh, we'll do it down here. So DOU, so I'll do the formula, but then I'll just explain how you do it, especially after you do a bunch of these problems. But our formula would say we have to double the number of carbons, so 2 times 4, right, because we have four carbons, then we add a built-in two, and then we add number of nitrogens, which is zero, we subtract off number of halogens, which is zero, subtract off number of uh, hydrogens, which is eight, then we divide by two. So actually, if you see, eight plus two is 10, minus eight, so we got two divided by two. This time, we have one degree of unsaturation. So remember what that means, right? We have either a ring or some pi bond, right? Whether it's carbon-carbon or carbon-oxygen. All right, so we need to be on the lookout. We have one degree of unsaturation. So I'll even, I'll just, I'll, I'll write it up here. DOU is equal to one. Important. Okay, so now let's build our chart. So 
we have three peaks. That means we have three distinct hydrogens, locations, right? So what I'm going to do is I'll label this peak A, peak B, peak C, okay? So down here, right, we got A. Let's go through A first. So our coupling for A. So you see we have one, two, three, four. This is a quartet, right? So n plus one, that, that's how we got that. Or sorry, we got that from the number of peaks. The integration for peak A is two. Uh, and then neighbors. So this was a quartet, and we did n plus one, and that gave us a quartet. That means we have three neighbors, right? Because we need three neighbors plus the built-in one to get the quartet. And the way we would appear then is that if we have three neighbors, Right, we're going to have some locations such like this with two hydrogens. And between these two locations, we're going to have three neighbors. So something to consider right there. Okay, so peak B. Uh, one thing I also forgot to say is that in this chart, you can also put in the, uh, the chemical shift if you want to. So right here, our shift is like about a 4. I'll do a 4.1. So that could also, you could build that into your appearance. So if you look at a chemical shift chart, which you better be, you better have one handy whenever you do these problems, is that this is going to be somewhere near, this on a chart would actually look like it's near an oxygen. So either an ether or next to an alcohol, something to consider right there. But there's probably, that is the reason why this is so downfield as opposed to the other two peaks. Okay, peak B. So we are a singlet. Okay, we have an integration of three. We have zero neighbors, right? Because n plus one gave us the singlet. That means we should have zero neighbors because n plus one will give us a singlet, which is one. So that means we have zero neighbors for n. This is just the n column, I guess I should say. All right, our appearance. Now this is a bit tricky. So we're a little bit downfield, not too much. But, and this is a thing you'll see commonly, is to have, so we have no neighbors and three hydrogens, right? So three hydrogens, which means we're on the end of a chain, we're terminal, and this is where we cut off. So this next position, what you'll see a common, a common theme of, this is either going to be a quaternary position, because there's no hydrogens, or what you will see, because we are a little downfield, is that sometimes you're just next to a carbonyl, because this carbon also has no hydrogen. So this is a potential, and our chemical shift is about a 1.9, 1.8, give or take. Okay. All right. Peak C. We got a triplet. We are pretty upfield at about a 1.2. Oh, it's, it's not a perfect drawing that I made. We should have two neighbors. N should be two because if it's a triplet, N plus one is three. Uh, again, it's, a, tr it's, it's a, a terminal methyl group. And right, this is what we saw in the last problem. This is very typical. It's just going to be a standard methyl group, very terminal. And this is going to be about a 1.2 or something like that. Oh, whoops. The integration. Sorry. The integration is 3 here. Okay. So given all this info, we have everything we need now to deduce the final structure. Okay. So sometimes, and again, this is a lot of trial and error. This is the part where it, it's the process kind of ends. You need to digest everything. And like just doing a lot of problems, getting some experience will make you better at solving these. But... Here's what I kind of like to do. We've, give, we've got everything we've gotten here. We know we're going to have a methyl group, terminal, right? So we already know what one end of this thing is supposed to look like. So I'm just going to go ahead and draw this. And I know my three hydrogens right there. This is pretty upfield, right? 1.2 chemical shift. So I shouldn't have anything um, electronegative nearby, right? So. Since this is a triplet, he needs to have two neighbors. So if I go ahead and draw this, right? Right here, just everything I've drawn, we'll cut this off right here. Right, I have a triplet, uh, 1.2 chemical shift, very outfield. He should have two neighbors. There, those are my two neighbors right here. Now, do I have anything right here that... Um, would kind of be satisfied going from here to here, right? Is there anything that should have three neighbors? And you know what? I actually do right here on peak A. I have a quartet. It should have three neighbors. And 
So this works right here back to back. And let's see if I can make this work. The chemical shift here is a 4.1. And it's an, so an integration of two, right? So this setup is fine, but now I need to keep chugging along. So everything I've, I've done so far is good. However, I need to make this chemical shift work. I can't really just keep going on my chain. Because if I do this, then there's no way this chemical shift is going to be a 4.1. So because I have two oxygens, and I know this is kind of what this is supposed to look like based on my chemical shift chart, let me go ahead and throw an oxygen here. So if I threw an oxygen in the chain, and obviously I'm going to have to continue my chain, now this piece of my molecule is satisfied, right? My triplet right here, the methyl group, very upfield, is good to go. Integration of 3, chemical shift of 1.2. If I look here, now I have my integration, my peak A, integration of 2, should be a quartet, right? N plus, N plus uh, 3 plus 1, N plus 1, that would give me a quartet. And now the chemical shift is satisfied because an ether type uh, kind of thing or uh, uh, hydrogen's alpha to an oxygen fall in that four-ish range. Okay, so I really only have one more peak left, right? Um, and two carbons and an oxygen left to go. And I haven't used my degree of unsaturation yet. So what I can do almost is let's just finish off the chain. What if I just did something like this? I know I'm going to have to have a singlet, integration of three. So it's like the other end of the structure. This would satisfy those one, two, three, four. Those are all my carbons, right? However, I need to make this a singlet because if I left this as is, right, I would have another uh, triplet and another quartet. But, and this is the thing, right? Like we looked at our appearance down here. If I slap my degree of unsaturation as this uh, carbonyl, completing this ester, I actually have the correct answer. And again, the beauty of NMR is you can just trial and error, right? I tried to kind of fumble my way and explain it as I was doing it, but sometimes you can just draw something and see if it works. So let's review this. Right here, this would be peak B, right? No neighbors, so it's a singlet. Integration of three, is, like we said, zero neighbors. It should look like this because the chemical shift is a little bit downfield, given from the fact that we have this carbonyl next door, so he's good to go. Now, if we look at peak, what we assign to be peak A, right, we need a quartet, so N plus one, three neighbors plus the position itself, that gives us the quartet, that gives us four. Integration of two, uh, the chemical shift is 4.1, given by the fact that it's next door to an electronegative oxygen, so that de-shields those hydrogens. Good to go there. And then if we finally look at peak C, right, we have that typical triplet at about the one mark, which is classic of a terminal methyl group because we have the three hydrogens, it's very shielded, upfield, and it fits the bill because it has two neighbors and that's a triplet. Okay, the next video, we're gonna do a bunch of examples. Hopefully um, that gets you a little bit more comfortable, but I'm gonna tell you what, uh, gang, NMR is a little frustrating in that the more problems you do, the better you're gonna do, but along with doing those problems, you're probably gonna struggle you're going to hate NMR, I know I did, but you'll start to pick up on these very common um, things and gotchas that you, you, you'll typically see in a spectrum. Like anytime I see a triplet one, it's, it's going to be on the end. Of, it's going to be a, like a, a terminal methyl group. That's just a, a thing you see. And, uh, and anytime you see a singlet, you'll kind of know a little bit what that looks like. But let's do more examples in the next video. I'm going to provide a bunch of links to great websites with a bunch of problems. Uh, and we'll just power through. See you in the next video.